My name is Asia Samson and today on Baptism Overland, we are installing the TRD Pro style grille on our 5th generation Toyota 4Runner. Lately, I've been doing so much work on the Jeep that I have somewhat kind of sort of neglected the 4Runner a little bit. With the 4Runner, it's still bone stock. Looking at the scope of what I'm going to have to do to the 4Runner to get it overland ready, it's a lot. And so it's kind of overwhelming. So I'm like, all right, well, the Jeep is pretty much already there. I just need to do a couple more things and we'll be done with that. And I can really focus on doing the 4Runner stuff. But... I did want to at least do something to kind of fix up the front of the 4Runner a little bit. My wife always really, really liked the pro grill look. I said, well, let's get the 4Runner uh, TRD off-road, which is an awesome, awesome vehicle, and we'll just switch out the front. This here is the pro-style grill that I bought off of 4Runner Lifestyle. Uh, I think they're also the same company as Overland Depot. Pretty great kit. I thought I had ordered the Raptor lights for it, but I guess I did not. So what do you get with this kit? Well, it's not a lot. You get the grill, you get the front plate, and this basically covers up where the Circle Toyota logo is. And then you also get your letters. What's great about this is that these letters stick on, you could choose it in different colors. You can choose white, you can choose chrome, or you can choose black. And I'm doing a whole blacked out thing here. So we're gonna do that. And what they do is they give you uh, indentations on here so that you can put the letters and it will be clean and it won't be crooked and it'll be straight. So we're going to do that. Um, we'll take the install tomorrow. It's nighttime now, so I really won't have any light to show you the install. So we'll do that first thing in the morning. I'm going to check to see if I have the Raptor lights. But for now, let's go ahead and put the letters on, and then we'll be ready to go in the morning. You can see some of the adhesive and I saw that on some of the reviews that when you put this on some of the adhesive kind of comes out. Good thing is everything is black so I may just be able to do something to it later. Um, maybe uh, plastic dip it or something but I really don't want to have to do that. Um, but maybe I could just hit it with something or kind of just do a little bit of scraping but with a black on black. I don't think, I mean, it's not super noticeable. I mean, it is because you have it on this angle, but there you go. It's not too bad. Okay, so with the stock grill removed, we are now going to remove these four screws that are holding this top piece in place because we will be reusing this top piece on the new one as well as the trim. So we just need to remove the grill part and we'll start with this top piece here. Then there's about, I believe, a couple more places here. Three on this side and three on the other side. Just a pro tip, clean up the stuff while you're doing installs. This is the only time you really get a chance to get in there because you know that once you install it, even when you clean, there are some areas you won't be able to get to later.
For the Raptor Lite install, that's pretty easy, but you do have to specify whether you want to do the 4 system or the 3 light system because the way they mount are going to be different. With the 4 light system, you'll see you have 4 slots here. That's where your lights will go and they clip on to this area, or you can do the row above that. But if you're going to do the 3 system, then that goes into these areas and those lights are not going to be the same shape and the way it mounts is going to be different. So I went with four. I like the look of all of it going right across and to put them on, all you got to do is pop them in place. Looks good, nice and secure. Now let's wire it up. For the inside, you just take the loom that they sent you. Uh, on one end of that loom, you'll see four plugs and these four plugs plug into these four lights. So when you start wiring it up, just make sure that you are not putting this anywhere where when the hood closes, it's going to squish it. So we're just going to go underneath, but it makes it easy. You don't have to splice it in or uh, solder in yourself. They're already ready to go and just plug and play. And then over here, we're just going to route it underneath. And then on this side, we're just going to go ahead and route it underneath this pillar, then through this hole here, and then along the sides. And we are going to head into the firewall. To go through the firewall, you're going to use this little plug back here. It's very noticeable. Um, right behind this whole unit here, there is a little plug for the firewall to go into your cabin. So we're going to just pop that off and pull our wires through there. So I went and cut out a hole for that plug. Use some tape to make it easier to feed through. All right, I'm switching to my phone, so I'm sorry if the audio is kind of bad, but it will come out right over here. You'll see this line, and this, this is your brake pedal right here. It'll be right in between it. So just start to pull, and there you go. All right, so the good thing about these connectors that they give you is that they've already pre-crimped it on one side and all you got to do is drop your wire in on the other side. So I put the red to the red and I'm just going to go ahead and add a heat shrink to it. You don't have to do that, but I like to try to keep things nice and neat and tidy. So I'm just going to shrink, heat shrink this. I can't bring my heat gun this far, so I'm just using my lighter. And then for the negative side, I'm just going to loop the wire to itself because it's a pretty thin gauged wire and what they give you you want to be able to fit that in there without it slipping out so I always just double it and then crimp that on. So before plugging anything in let's kind of route the wire so that it it's out of the way. What you don't want is for these wires to be hit by your brakes or by your parking brake when you engage it you don't want it rubbing up on anything and causing a short so I'm just gonna kind of make sure it's tucked in and out of the way somewhere actually you might even be able to do better than this I can go behind this too Alright, so as far as where you plug this into, this way is where you're sitting. That way is to the engine. So when you're looking at it in that orientation, you'll see right here, you'll see a, a 15, 7.5, 10, 10, a space, and then another 10. You're going to plug that right into there. And that's that. Alright, let's test it to see if it works. Okay, I know the letters are crooked, all right?
get off my back. Stop commenting. Like, for real, if you think it bothers you, it's been bothering me way longer than it has been bothering you. And I'm a guy who like has really bad OCD. So you have to understand my pain so much so that I actually contacted Forerunner Lifestyle to see if I can just buy the letters again because I'll just start all over. I mean, you could peel these out, but to try to get sticky tape on the back of each of those letters perfectly again, is going to be near to impossible. So you're better off just buying a whole new set of letters and trying again. But the problem is this, the issue with this system with putting these letters on is that the trim that they give you has indentations and each letter has two indentations each and then on the back of each letter there are protrusions and you're supposed to put those protrusions into the indentations and then put it in there and it should be straight well the problem is the sticky tape that's on the back of each letter kind of glosses over those indentations so you're not getting a really secure fit when you're putting it in there it's kind of wobbly a little bit and I didn't recognize until I was four letters in that it was already kind of crooked at which that point you can't really put it out anymore because you've already activated the, the tape and it's not gonna adhere anymore as well as it did so after that you're kind of SOL so I'm in the process of contacting them now and hopefully getting a new set of letters and doing this again because it's really bothering me. The good thing is it's black on black, so it's not like super noticeable. If you were to drive past me, you would probably never even notice it. But if you were to look up close and really look at it, then you can tell it's a bit crooked. I mean, you could see it in the close-ups of my B-rolls. But I'll get it fixed. I mean, I'm not going to let this go like this forever because it, it, it's already bothering me so much. Other than that though, everything else about this kit was great. Everything fit perfectly. The new grill fit in there like it was OEM. It clipped on in the right areas and it wasn't off. And then the middle trim piece that they give you to cover the old middle area covers it just right and it covers up that, that indentation of the oval logo that was left behind. So that covers it really nice and just gives it a really stock OEM feel. The only thing about that middle trim piece, aside from those indentations though, is that because it kind of curves, um, it tends to pop out at the ends because the sticky tape, you have to push it in and it'll hold it, but then after a while it would like pop out on me. So what I did to combat that was I took a heat gun and I sort of just heated up the plastic to make it really pliable, not to melt it, but just to really heat it up and then you're able to kind of mold it to the middle area perfectly. And then for added security at the very bottom where you don't see it, I put in a couple of screws just to hold it in place. You're never gonna see that stuff and it's gonna hold that shape much, much better than just relying on the sticky tape. So just a couple of tips if yours is not fitting in perfectly, try using a heat gun and that'll help you kind of manage it a little bit and then use a couple of screws to hold it at the bottom and then you're good to go. And as far as the Raptor light kit, that was easy as well. Those lights just popped into that grill perfectly, snapped in there, no problems, no issues with fitment, just perfect. And then they give you all the wiring, which is great, and it was already set up for you. Just a real quick thing about the wiring, and really it's my fault, but I had the wire go into the cabin underneath to where the fuse box is, and I plugged it into the slot that you're told to plug it into. Had my ground and everything, turned the ignition on, and the lights weren't lighting up. And I'm like, okay, is there something wrong with my lights? Is there something wrong with my wiring? And at that point, you have to do like process of elimination. So I checked all my connections. They all look good. I made sure that I was in the right slot. I was. And so I said, okay, let me pull the wires back out. So I took them out of the cabin, went back to the engine bay. Then I touched the positive and negative wires to the positive and negative terminals to the battery and the lights lit up. So I knew there's nothing wrong with the lights. So I knew something was wrong with how I was wiring it somewhere. There was somewhere that it wasn't connecting properly. So I brought it back into the cabin underneath and then I redid the wiring and I realized that what it was, was I just didn't have a good ground. I, for some reason or the other, it just wasn't connecting as well as I thought it was connected because as soon as I put the ground on and then I plugged it back into that same slot, lit up and it was perfect. So that was on me. So just make sure if it happens to you, I'm bringing this up in case you try to turn it on and for some reason it's not turning. First thing you want to do, in fact, before you even route it into your cabin, just take the positive and negative and touch it to the battery and make sure your lights work. So then at least you know that that's good to go. 
go ahead and wire it in. And then if it's still not working, then make sure you check your connections because somewhere in there, there's a connection that's wrong because where you're supposed to plug it into on your fuse box, it is the correct place. It's the right place. It will light up if you put it there. If it's not lighting up, then you have a bad connection somewhere or the other. But anyway, that's it for the video. Nothing really crazy about this one, but I thought I'd share it because it was a fun install and it completely changed the look of the Forerunner. I mean, this was a look that my wife wanted since we started shopping for the Forerunners. She really likes that pro look. So I'm glad I was able to give it to her and she really, really loves the Raptor lights. She thought they were really cool. So I'm glad to make her happy in that way. I'm excited about what else we're going to be doing to the Forerunner. I know we have plans for it as soon as I, well, not really finish the Jeep because it's never really finished, right? But I'm excited to do other stuff to this Forerunner. I know we're going to make it look really, really cool and just join us and you'll be able to see it transform through the years and hopefully we can get it done a lot sooner than we hope. But otherwise, if you enjoyed this, please like this video, subscribe to our channel. Also, you can show your support to us financially through Patreon. We do have a Patreon account now, so if you want to support, there are some perks on there. Make sure you go check that out. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. Thank you.